The Adobe PDF format, or Portable Document Format, is an industry standard file format that enables you to share files which can be viewed on almost any device. You can edit PDFs directly in CorelDRAW, which means that you can avoid recreating a document from scratch and that you don't need separate software just for PDF editing. In this video, I'll demonstrate PDF import, highlight some import issues that can occur, and demonstrate some easy fixes. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. In this example, let's say a client wants some changes to this design piece, but the only source file is this PDF. Rather than recreate the entire design from scratch in CorelDRAW, I can bring the PDF right into CorelDRAW and go from there. In a blank CorelDRAW file, I'll choose File Import and select the PDF. I'm keeping text as text and also including comments which will be placed on their own layer. After the import is complete, I have all of the design elements on layer 1 and the comments are grouped together in the comments layer. I'll click the eye icon to turn off the comments layer for now. In the objects docker, I can see that all text elements were imported as artistic text objects and the fonts are identical to those in the PDF as long as the original fonts from the PDF are on my system. I can change fonts or colors or characters if needed, which means I don't need any additional software just for editing PDF text. The background and superhero character are comprised of hundreds of individual curves. I'll find the first curve for the character, select it, and shift select the last curve, which selects the whole character. Now I'll press Ctrl G to group. I can toggle off the visibility of this group to make sure I got it all, and the R on his chest wasn't included. So I'll find this artistic text object and add it to the group. Now, not only have I added a bit of organization to my object stalker, I also have the superhero character packaged up together, which I could export as an object if, say, I wanted to use him as a logo in other design files. Now I'll do the same grouping for the background, which is made up of over 600 curves. I'll group these as well, and now I could export the background for use elsewhere. An issue that may occur after converting files created in other applications is these vertical breaks separating curves throughout the background image. The fix for this is really simple. I'll right-click on the background group and choose Object Hinting. This feature helps improve object rendering by adjusting the display of an object so that it lines up with the pixel grid. The background still has dozens of separate curves, but the breaks between curves are gone and they look much more smoothly blended. And because these curves are completely editable, I could change colors, move things around, add effects, etc. Now I'll lock this group in the object stalker, which will make it easier to work with other elements such as the text. Now let's look at the text. As I mentioned before, everything looks identical to the original. All text is artistic text, including the long text string along the bottom of the document. I could leave this text as is if I just wanted simple changes like font or color. But for more complex editing, or to change the copy itself, this should be converted to paragraph text. Note that there are separate artistic text objects for each place where the font switches to bold and back, and symbols such as this copyright symbol are also separate artistic text objects. When selecting artistic text for conversion to paragraph text, the selection order is important. In the object stalker, here is the first line, and here is the last, so the order is actually in reverse. So with the shift key, I'll select the first line down here, then the last line up here. It's best to do this in the object stalker so that you don't miss any text elements. If you were to use a marquee selection on the document itself, the selection order would turn out upside down. Now I'll press Ctrl L to combine all of these objects, which brings everything into one line. The next step is to right click and convert to paragraph text, or I could press Ctrl F8. To separate the lines, I'll increase the spacing by dragging down the letting icon. Now I need to go into the text itself by double clicking to remove line breaks. I can readjust the text frame and letting by eye, but for more precise control, I'll open the Properties Docker to the Paragraph tab. Here I can set the line spacing to match the point size of the text. The copyright symbol is included as regular text, 
So with it selected, I'll switch to the Character tab of the Properties Docker, expand the options, and use the Position icon to switch this character to Superscript. Back in the Objects Docker, I'll turn the Comments layer back on to see the changes I need to make. The title text is supposed to get a drop shadow, so I'll use the Shadow tool to take care of that. For the text at the bottom, I'll change its color to black, bump up the font size, and switch the font to Calibri. I can also adjust the text frame and reset the line spacing. Now I can delete the entire comments layer. PDF editing within CorelDRAW gives you enormous design flexibility with no need for software specifically for PDFs. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on PDF import in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial to try out the steps yourself.